today was a police officer, PC Keith Palmer, a member of our Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. Keith, aged 48, had 15 years service and was a husband and a father. He was someone who left for work today expecting to return home at the end of his shift and he had every right to expect that would happen. I can also now confirm that there are three members of the public who've lost their lives in the attack. Specially trained family support, family liaison officers have been deployed to support them. And as I confirmed earlier, the suspected attacker was shot dead by an armed officer. Therefore meaning that now in total we have five people who've died today. I will not comment on this stage at the identity of the attacker, but our working assumption is that he was inspired by international terrorism. I should also say at this stage that we believe now approximately 40 people have been injured, uh, including several with serious injuries, um, including three police officers, two of whom are in serious condition. Our investigation continues and is moving at a very fast pace this evening. We will be working throughout the night we have hundreds of officers on this investigation and they're focusing on the suspect's motivation, preparation and his associates. We are forensically examining a complicated fire, crime scene that covers a wide area and as with all investigations of this nature, it will take us some time to work through the painstaking work necessary to gather all the relevant evidence. Only then will the full picture be known. Officers are taking statements from the hundreds of people who were nearby as today's attack unfolded and we're seizing and examining CCTV. I can also report that the lockdown of Parliament has concluded and we're working to reduce the evidence cordoned off. I'd like to thank the public and parliamentarians for their patience and assistance as we carried out detailed examinations and work in that area. As the Prime Minister said earlier on, the UK threat level has been at severe for some time and, it's, and this level is not changing. But we have enhanced the scale of our policing operations at present to protect communities across the country. As we continue to investigate today's horrific events, we do want to reassure the public that police and partners will do everything possible to protect them. As a precautionary measure, over the next few days we've increased the number of officers on duty armed and unarmed to provide a highly visible, reassuring presence. This will continue for as long as is necessary. Terrorists have a clear aim. That is to create discord, distrust and to create fear. The police stand with all communities in the UK and will take action against anybody who seeks to undermine society, especially where their crimes are motivated by hate. We must recognise now that our Muslim communities will feel anxious at this time given the past behaviour of extreme right-wing groups and we will continue to work with all community leaders over coming days. It is essential for us to remain vigilant but also to work together, police and communities, to unite against those who, those who seek through violence and extremism to threaten, to intimidate and to cause fear. We ask the public to be alert and to report any suspicious activities of the police calling our anti-terrorism hotline on 0800 789 321 or dialing 999. Today is an incredibly sad and sombre day, especially for the Metropolitan Police Service and everyone is affected. But it is only right that I finish by mentioning the pride I feel in the swift and brave response from our officers, especially from those who without um, fear for their own safety confronted the terrorist. Thank you. I'll take a couple of questions. So, no, you're not going to use identity on air, but do you think you know who the man is that carried out this attack? We think we know who the, um, who the attacker is, and as I say, we're working to look at associates. I know there are some proactive investigative journalists out there. I'd ask for restraint to allow our investigation to move forward without being troubled by unnecessary reporting. Can you confirm if he was a British national uh, and whether there are concerns that there may be others involved in this and the potential for other attacks? As I've said, it's an ongoing investigation. To give any more details about him, associates or our investigations would be inappropriate, so I can't answer that question. Can we know the nationalities of the uh, England? So um, we know we have a range of nationalities amongst the English people. We're working with their, uh, working with their host countries. As you'd expect in a tourist location such as, um, such as Westminster Bridge, um, it'd be wrong for me to 
uh, mention those now until we've managed to liaise with the host countries and their families. You said it was related to international terrorism. Are we talking about the same Islamic State at this point? Uh, so, yeah, so Islamist related terrorism is our assumption. Uh, any concern for the next hours and for tomorrow, for example? Um, so, in terms of levels of concern, the Prime Minister said earlier that we're not changing the national threat level. Our independent body that looks at those issues has decided that's not necessary at this stage. So we're still at the same level of severe, an attack remains highly likely. But given what's happened, as on a precautionary basis, across the country we're stepping up police patrols, unarmed and armed. We've been listening to Assistant Commissioner Mark Rowley giving an update to the terror attack on London, saying now that three civilians died and one police officer. That police officer has been named as 48-year-old Keith Palmer. And Mr Rowley is saying that this is being treated as an Islamist-related terror attack.